Yeah, hello. My name is Bruce Lutsky. I'm a reference librarian at the Van Houten Library here at NJIT. And the aim of um, this lecture is to demonstrate how to find information in civil and environmental engineering. It's aimed specifically at students of um, Environmental Engineering 262 who have to write a paper for the course. But certainly other undergraduate students and graduate students of civil engineering may look at it to just familiarize themselves with the organization of the literature in their field and how to find information in civil and environmental engineering. Okay, so we talk about the scientific method. So scientists and engineers devise experiments and conduct them all the time and evaluate the results. Likewise, people are looking for information all the time. We're now flooded with information in this internet era. That it's a lot easier for people to put information out there. And since there's so much out there, it could be even harder to find the information that you really need and know that it's from a reliable source. Okay, so there's similarities between the scientific method and how to find information. So when conducting experiments, you know your subject, you're looking for new knowledge, a new cause and effect relationship, you propose an experiment based on what you know, you conduct the experiment, and after a period of time, you observe and interpret the results. You may have to revise the experiment and then interpret the final outcome again. Okay, the problem in um, doing an experiment is very often it, it takes time. And if the experiment does not work, a lot of time, effort, and money can be expended and you didn't get what you want. Now, there's a parallel process when you're looking for information. You have to know the scope and content of the databases in your field. You're looking for new knowledge. You're looking for background information on a topic. You want to make sure that the research that you're doing has not been done in the past. So you devise an initial search strategy using the relevant terminology in the subject databases. You examine the initial answer set and this only takes a few seconds. When you do a search in a database, as we'll see in a little while, it really only takes seconds to execute. The longer part is to examine that initial answer set to see if it has the information you need. And if you have to redo it again, there's not that much time wasted. You can revise the search strategy using different terminology, examine the final answer set, find the relevant documents and use the information that you found. So this is a relatively faster process than it is when you're conducting an experiment. Okay, so this is also done on this slide here of, of the iterative process of developing a research question, executing the search strategy and evaluating the results. Okay, so, so keep this in mind uh, as uh, well. So there are various formats of the scientific and technical literature that we'll discuss in this presentation. The journal, the conference proceeding, the magazine, review journal, a research level book, an encyclopedia, and a uh, data compilation. What is a journal? Okay. So people, scientists and engineers all over, report their research results in a journal. Okay, but okay, so a journal is a publication issued periodically that reports original research. So original is most important. So when you do experiments, you, you take down notes, you put it in the laboratory notebook, and then when you want to write it up, you write up a manuscript and uh, you want to submit it to a journal. The journals have an editor and um, it undergoes a very rigorous peer review process before it's accepted for publication. There are probably millions and millions of websites out there where whatever is put up is not vetted 
anybody can put up information on a website but to get anything published in a respected journal it has to go through the peer review process and I'll discuss that in detail so what happens during peer review the scientist writes a paper and submits it to a journal as we'll see in a few minutes journals are very specific on what they cover in terms of subject matter the editor maybe takes a quick look at the paper determines that um, it's right for this journal the subject matter at least but sends it to other specialists in in the field for anonymous review of the quality and originality so the person who's writing the paper does not know who's reviewing it and the people who are reviewing it don't know who wrote it and they see examined was a work done properly is the discovery original if it's not original research it won't be accepted in a journal is a subject appropriate for the journal and most important reproducibility will other scientists be able to understand and repeat the experiments with the same results okay so the reviewers make a report to the editor the editor can accept the manuscript as is, reject it, or accept it conditionally and require revisions. So again, this is reflected on this slide as well. This is a little graphical. So you can look at this slide and this reviews the, the process as well. Okay, let's move on. So here are selected journals in civil and environmental engineering and you see the um, that by the titles they're very specific in what they cover so let's just take a look at a typical journal article let's click on here environmental science and technology and see what is what a journal article looks like okay so again it defaults to the uh, most current issue of the journal And you see here's a title, something here, Review of Organic Wastewater Compound Concentrations and Removal in On-Site Wastewater Treatment Systems. So you can click on PDF. Years ago you couldn't do that. You'd have to search the library and um, find the article and, and photocopy it. So, okay, so you see that the gives you the title, the, the authors, the affiliation of the authors and this abstract this abstract is a one paragraph summary of the article to help you determine if this is what you're looking for okay that it's a four you see it's a 14 page paper you might just judge from this one paragraph abstract whether it's what you're looking for and you want to read further or not and you skip it and go to something else so you see that the journal article is very detailed, uh, an introduction, materials and methods. So there's enough information in there so that you can repeat the experiment. Okay, there's, there's uh, tables here, results and discussion, some graphs. You see it's very detailed. And of course, um, we'll see at the end is a bibliography. Okay, go down the list here, 14 page paper. There's your bibliography. So research articles and journals are very detailed and very technical. Okay, let's go back to the PowerPoint now. Okay, now I know many of you are in the structural engineering area of civil. So there's a four titles there. Um, if you're interested, you can look those up and see what those journal articles look for. So there's a computer-aided civil and infrastructure engineering. So just judging by the title, you can see how specific that journal is. It will only accept articles in that specific area. What are open access journals? Of course, um, libraries have 
subscriptions to journals that even though they're online they're not free that we have to pay for them to get access to those journals but there's nothing new called the open access movement so open access journals are available free of charge to library students and anybody else who wants to do it but even though they're free uh, the person who's doing the research or the research grant has to pay for the article to be in an open access journal but it still undergoes the rigorous peer review process before they're accepted for publication uh, many government agencies require that the journal be open access in the sense that since taxpayer dollars are supporting the research the feeling is is it, it should be open access to anybody okay so here's an example of a few open access journals in civil and environmental engineering okay what is the conference proceeding scientists and engineers go to conferences all the time at a conference researchers speak to an audience and they report on what they have done what their new research is but the research has to be available to others who are not at the conference so it's made available through a conference proceedings so like the american society of civil engineers is an example of an organization that runs conferences some conferences are only held once some are held yearly some are held every two years and uh, here's an example of some conferences here environmental engineering 1999 uh, and so on so it's a very important source of original research a review journal okay as we saw a few minutes ago that the original research journals are very detailed so the review journal is a condensed version of a research journal and it summarizes research done over a short period of time so you may be doing current awareness research you don't need all the experimental details so it's a condensation of what happens what you see in a research journal so the annual review of energy and the environment is an example of a review journal magazines okay magazines of course are non-technical popular but in the science and engineering field that there are magazines as well so a magazine is issued periodically and it has scientific articles and engineering articles but the language is not technical so people who are not specialists can understand what's going on the original journal article is very detailed and very technical but these magazine articles are more general and available to a wider audience so I have on this slide examples of four magazines in civil and environmental engineering okay a monograph a monograph is like a fancy word a jargon type word for a book so books of course are written at different levels and eventually state-of-the-art research maybe a few years later would be written up in a book and it makes the information available to a wider audience a handbook used to be available only in print but now they are electronic as well is a summary of the highlights of the topic um, it's usually there are uh, contributions by many experts in the field who write chapters they provide a lot of tabular data and in the next slide here I'll give a few examples of some handbooks the standard handbook for civil engineers handbook of civil engineering calculations and so on now there's a novel handbooks that we have here which are electronic the information is related to chemistry and chemical engineering okay encyclopedias are very very general 
they introduce people to a field of study. So if you're not familiar with something, you would be likely to consult an encyclopedia by before doing more in-depth research. So I have on this slide um, a few examples of encyclopedias that are printed that we have here at the NJIT library. Now the Wikipedia is an example of an electronic encyclopedia, but can it be trusted as a source of science and engineering information? Maybe it's been around for almost 15 years now and it's become very popular. But what is the issues of the Wikipedia? Is it anybody can write up an article on it and other people can change it? So you don't know who wrote the article, you don't know who changed it, you don't know how reliable the information is in it. Uh, the Wikipedia, um, some articles are better than others. Uh, some of them have very detailed bibliographies and uh, you can use that to, to get to more specific information on a, a topic. So let's maybe digress from the PowerPoint for a minute here and let's go on to the internet here and let's do a quickie search in the Wikipedia www.wikipedia.org okay and let's oops I made him a typo there www.wikipedia.org that happens all the time okay all right so if I can put in in here groundwater let's say groundwater pollution okay so again it's very general gives you contents here pollutant types naturally occurring pollution and so on this looks like a decent article in the Wikipedia um, relatively lengthy and um, and it prompts you if you want to edit it you can and this article does have a, a pretty good bibliography list of references so I would rate this article on groundwater pollution it is good for the Wikipedia but again it's not a stopping point it's a starting point of doing research okay back to our PowerPoint here moving onward okay there's a flow of scientific and technical information from people who are creating it to people who need it so uh, it's written up in journal articles and maybe a few years later it becomes available in books and review articles and then eventually goes into the tertiary literature handbooks encyclopedias textbooks so if you're not familiar with a topic you certainly don't want to um, do a search in journals you would look for more of the tertiary literature and to get it journals we use indexes and abstracts which really we now call databases so most of this presentation now from onward will discuss the databases that are available for you uh, to use so again I have it in this slide here you can read this if you want on um, how the information flows from somebody who needs it to somebody who from somebody it flows from somebody people who are creating it to somebody who uses it sometime in the uh, future okay okay types of databases there's a bibliographic databases that include the elements needed to identify the document author title journal year and so on and as we saw in that journal article we looked at that most bibliographic databases have an abstract a one paragraph summary of the article to help the researcher decide if it's relevant to the research question okay and we'll see that later when 
I'm finished with this PowerPoint. We'll go on to the um, a search and we'll see that. Full text, the full text database includes the entire article in electronic format. A numeric data compilation, I usually discuss this with the chemistry students, inclu includes only specific data elements such as thermodynamic or spectral data. Limitations of databases, no one database is universal, it's limited by subject, limited by dates of publication. The more recent the information is, the more likely it's available electronically. Types of publication. And not all databases provide the full text or links to them. So here are some examples of some databases that we'll discuss here. Scopus, SciFinder, Business Source Premier, which is a, covers trade magazines, American Society of Civil Engineers, which is a publisher, the Environmental Protection Agency, of course, which is a governmental agency. It has government reports in there. Um, Academic Search Premier has some coverage. It's very general. And Search All on the engineering, on the NJIT library home page where, where you can search several databases at once. And we'll see these a little later. Okay, Scopus. Scopus is a multidisciplinary database. It contains records going back to the mid-1960s. It covers all the STEM databases. Again, like all the databases today, it's very, very much user-friendly. And we'll do a sample search in Scopus uh, a little uh, later on. Okay. Okay. So it covers about 57 million records, 21,000 journal titles from over 5,000 publishers, adds about 2 million records each year. Okay, now Scopus is published by Elsevier. Elsevier is the world's largest publisher of scientific and technical information, but Elsevier also publishes in journals. So, 10% of the articles in Scopus is from Elsevier publishers, but it covers many other publishers as well. And it covers the physical sciences, which of course would be of interest to you, including engineering, social sciences, life sciences, and health sciences. So it's a pretty good database. SciFinder. SciFinder is a chemistry database. I usually mention it briefly when I lecture to ENE 262 or to other civil engineering students. Um, it's an electronic version of Chemical Abstracts 1907 to the present. Contains links to full text articles. It's searchable by chemical substance, reaction, research type, author, or affiliation. And uh, you have to register to use it. You only have to register once. And then you have the account for as long as you're a student here at NJIT. Okay. All right. There's a link in the database for every article, and you can click there to see if the article is available to us at NJIT. Mention that about an account. And the databases have um, how-to guides, and you can find them at that link over there. Okay, now the publishers have databases. There are um, professional society publishers at the American Society of Civil Engineers, and there are for-profit organizations in the publishing business like Elsevier, Springer, and Wiley. So if I click on American Society of Civil Engineers, it'll bring you to the database of their publications. So very often you'll do a search in Scopus or SciFinder and it will give you a link to an article that's in one of these publisher specific databases which has the full text of the, uh, the article. 
Here are some examples of some American Society of Civil Engineer journals. And you can see again by the title how specific the journal is. And here are some science direct journals published by Elsevier. Global and Planetary Change. Cement and Concrete Composites. They will only accept articles in that specific area. Evaluating websites. Okay, I know students love Google. Uh, when you search Google, you get websites. You don't know how good or how reliable uh, the information is on a website. So I always encourage people to use um, websites. No, excuse me. Take that back. Databases. Use the databases first because you know they're peer reviewed. They know they're from a reliable source. But in evaluating websites, there is this crap test. Is it current? Is the date of the website on there? Is it relevant? The authority is very important. Who is the author, publisher, source, or sponsor? You don't know who it is. It may not be reliable. Is it accurate? Where does the information come from? And the purpose. There are many websites that are commercial that are trying to sell you a product. So really be careful if you use websites. The Environmental Protection Agency has a website with databases. It covers laws and regulations, environmental issues, test methods, and reviews of chemicals that are in the environment. Okay, we have the NGIT Library home page. Um, I'll show you that when I'm finished with the um, PowerPoint. Okay, search all. That's on the NGIT library homepage. It aggregates several NGIT databases, so you can search a number of databases at once. You c it, a very good feature is that you can limit by peer-reviewed or full-text availability. Okay, Voyager is the NGIT library catalog. Okay, I have this research guide. It's um, researchguides.ngit.edu slash civil. So this presentation will be there, both the narrated version and the non-narrated version. And I also have a list of selected websites in civil and environmental engineering that hopefully will be useful. Availability of journals. We don't get very many print journals any longer, but sometimes the older journals are available only in print. Now everything is available electronically, but sometimes there's a, a date. After a certain date, it's available electronic. Before a certain date, it's only available in print. And I mentioned open access journals. And we have an interlibrary loan service. If you ever need anything, a book, or a periodical article that's not available through NJIT, you can order it through interlibrary loan. Okay, Boolean logic that all database searches are based on that. The AND narrows it, water pollution and benzene and New Jersey. The Boolean OR expands it, ozone or smog or particulates. The not limits it also. Water pollution, not chloroform. So devising an optimal search strategy. Okay, so what you need to do, choose the proper databases. Know their scope and limitations. Use the all relevant search terms and appropriate Boolean logic. Think in terms of concepts, not words. So you may have to experiment. You may have to use a few search strategies before you get the optimal one. 
and you may want to be precise. You may only need a few um, references on a topic. Uh, if you're too precise, you may run the risk of missing relevant articles. If you're too exhaustive, you um, uh, will get obviously irrelevancy, but that's the price you have to pay for being exhaustive. You may take time to go through the articles and get the ones that are relevant to you. Is your answer reasonable? Same thing in an experiment. If it's not reasonable, can you do something different? You may have to do a different search strategy. And the thought processes. You know, the computers are very nice, they're very fast, but you have to tell it what to do, tell it what to look for. Ask for help. We have a reference desk in the library, or you can phone us. And here's my name my email and my phone number. So I'm always willing to help NGIT students in their um, research endeavors. So don't be afraid to ask for help. Okay, cite your sources. Okay, there are certain sources here where it will format your, your research for you. Um, and click on those. EndNote is a program that you can download from the university and it will help you generate a bibliography. And Scopus and EBSCO host databases like Search All can help you output your bibliography in the format of choice. I mentioned in the library loan before, but please always be complete when you submit an interlibrary loan. Okay, so let's try a sample copy uh, topic here, algal viruses used to control um, algal bloom. But before I get to that, I'll show you the NGIT library homepage as this concludes our um, PowerPoint here. Again, there's my name, again, my contact information. Okay, so that concludes the PowerPoint. Okay, so it's library.ngit.edu. Okay, you want to just look for a book, you can search here. This gives you the list of databases. If you're looking for a specific journal, um, you can search on here. We want to search for our various research guides. We have general ones and we have subject specific research guides as well. To submit an interlibrary loan um, here, you can click on here. Uh, this lists the subject specialists. Uh, you can search on Ask a Librarian. There are email addresses of specific librarians, including myself. If you don't know who to contact, there's a generic email ask a librarian at ngit.edu. So let's try a search in Scopus. Click on databases, link here. Um, we are, but there are more databases as well, but we're going to do Scopus. Okay. So again, Scopus has a line here. You can put your search topic here. If you need to use Boolean logic, you can put in another term here, another search string, do it again. So I'm going to say here, okay, algal viruses, whoops, and control. There's a Boolean and there. You can change that if you want. We're going to use the and, and algal bloom. Okay, so we're going to do a Boolean search on these three terms. I get 52 documents. Now the default here is to sort on the date, so the newest comes out first. But what you might want to do is, is to sort on relevance. Okay, so the, the so 
obviously it's done algorithmically the program does it for you so um, if you like number seven the title looks good dynamic background and viral response to algal bloom at sub-zero temperatures click here gives you the abstract okay so the abstract helps you decide if this is what you want if it gives what you want you can click on view it publisher or check it full text click it view it publisher okay so here you go here um, and there's a link here for PDF okay a few seconds it'll come up if we have a subscription to it if we don't have a subscription to it you'll get a link a dead link here okay so here is the full text of that article you see it's it's very detailed here you can print it out you can download it if you're working in a group you can email it to the people in your group okay one of the disadvantages of Scopus is when you do the search in Scopus you can't tell right away if the NGIT has full text access to it but let's try the search again in search all search all advanced search again there's a boolean logic here there are pull down menus if you want to use those so I can say the same search algal viruses and control and algal bloom okay search well, you see it only takes a couple of seconds to do the search there are 54 hits okay this is sorting on relevance okay now what you can do here you can limit it to full text availability and limit it to um, peer reviewed full text and let's limit also to peer reviewed so this one here number four looks excellent so if you like that click here a nice feature of the search all which is published by um, EBSCO is you can cite it and you know, if you like APA what you have to do is uh, here copy and paste it in your bibliography and um, it's there in the APA format or whatever format you choose okay so let's get rid of that back to results list okay so we like that one it was number four click on full text from Wiley page not found so there was a that might be a glitch all right let's try another one find record from science direct click there and then it says download PDF okay so and there's your full article there okay and then back to the library home page it also gives you some relevant articles too here okay so that pretty much concludes this presentation thank you for your kind attention I hope it's useful to you and if you need help in the library don't don't hesitate to call on us okay thanks again for watching